Okay. Um, so I just um, wanted to describe uh, a reformulation, first of all, of quantum mechanics. Um, so this is a um, something that you can see within the standard picture, um, but it reveals all kinds of uh, new interesting structures. So um, first of all, this kind of uh, follows on the talk of you here. Um, first of all, let me just give you this uh, distinction between what we call the uh, for evolving state and the back evolving state. So here we have, you know, here we have measurements at different times, and those are the outcomes: z equals one, z equals one, so on and so forth. And that's just doing the time reverse of it. And here's the usual forward evolving time vector. And the point is that I just to emphasize that these are different. So there's two different vectors there, associated with two different Hilbert spaces. So that they're not necessarily equal to each other. It just makes it, you know, more explicit. Um, and again, this is a reformulation of quantum mechanics. And the metric that we have used to evaluate this kind of these kinds of reformulations basically is what is it good for? You know, does it give you some new insight? Does it allow you to discover some new aspect of the theory? So on and so forth. So one thing, of course, that it did is it um, you know, originate with the, the ABL formula. Another thing is the weak value, which has been a very useful concept. I mean, it's, you know, it's led to, for example, what Alonso was just speaking about, led to things like the quantum random walk, it led to new aspects of mathematics called super Fourier, so on and so forth. Um, but I want to now apply this to um, something we call multiple time states and multiple time measurements. So, um, the first observation is that these two vectors can be superposed, just like you superpose ordinary quantum mechanical states. So here's an example. Here's what's called a two-time state. Um, it's just, let me give you a graphical representation of it. Here's a, a generalized state that has many different superpositions. So this is just kind of one way of thinking about it. You have, you know, in system, you have superpositions of, of pre and post-selected states. And the other basic uh, concept that's introduced in this paper is what's called a multiple time measurement. And <clears throat> these are measurements that have multiple stages of measurement. And the, the basic idea is that you can't, you, know, you can't separate them into individual moments. You have to have these multiple moments of time to represent the outcomes of those measurements. So this, was, this kind of idea has been used in a couple of different contexts. For example, in, in the talk that Alonso just gave, the probably the more familiar one was this um, provocative paper, you know, how you could tell with certainty the outcome of three uh, non-commuting observables in a single particle. And I'm just going to kind of skip over that. Um, but this, you know, famously was uh, tested in real experiment and shown to be <coughs> correct. Okay, so the basic idea of this reformulation is the point that uh, whenever we talk about multiple instances of time, you can prove that the description is given by, the description of the state of that system is given by a combination of bras and cats. So here's an example of a four-time state, and it has a well-defined past and a well-defined future, and um, it's this combination of states in the Hilbert space, and what we're then going to do is make measurements, multiple time measurements in those, for example, in those two times. So that's where the real power of the formalism comes in. And this state is described by, these are, notice these are not scalar products. These are, this is a, you know, a broadcast combination. And in these slots we can then insert these multiple time measurements. But that's the basic, basic state for this uh, um, multiple time measurement. Here's another example. Um, I'll just skip over that one. So here's an example of a multiple time measurement. This is measuring sigma x of a particle at one time minus sigma x of the same particle at a different time. And <clears throat> for example, this can be uh, giving an outcome of zero, but you can obtain this result without necessarily knowing what sigma x is at time t1 or knowing what sigma x is at time t2. It's really, uh, it's kind of like a, 
the results of this are like entangled states in time. So if you look at these, uh, the outcomes of that kind of multiple-time measurement has, have these kinds of uh, projection operators, and those are like having you know EPR states in time. So the most general description of a state and the most general description of a measurement are very similar to each other. Here we have the state is given by a combination of rods and jets, and the measurements are given by a combination of rods and jets. So um, the, there's no simple description of these multiple time measurements in just standard quantum mechanics. So it becomes very useful to, to understand different things. And one of the beautiful aspects of this is that it puts the, the kinematic, the state description, and the dynamical description on the same footing. It actually ignites them. <coughs> so, um, so let me just, uh, I'm almost running out of time, let me just give you an example of how you could use this very usefully. Um, so, for example, if we want to do calculations with this, let me just uh, throw this up here. Uh, you want to test what is the outcome of a multiple time measurement. For example, here's your state description and here's your measurement. And you just do a composition of it. That gives you the, you know, the tensor product of these things. Like it allows you to calculate the results of these multiple time measurements. One other just footnote here. Um, these states are themselves Lorentz covariant. This is a very beautiful aspect. Now, one, uh, I have a minute left, so one uh, very curious um, application of this is to completely change the way we think about the flow of time. And we call that each moment of time is a new universe. So um, just very quickly, um, if you wanted to build such a theory, it's kind of trivial to do it in, in classical mechanics. Here's a, you know, a particle in position over time. You can do a mapping between one particle at many instances of time and many particles, right? And just map one time to a different particle. Um, the question is, could you do, so classical mechanics is trivial. The question is, could you do that in quantum mechanics? You can prove that you cannot. Um, and the reason is that um, you cannot represent these subtle correlations between multiple instances of time. It's impossible to do it with the usual picture of quantum mechanics. You can do it with this reformulation by having <coughs> this kind of entanglement between the post-selective vector of one particle and the pre-selective vector of another particle. And so then you just stack these particles right on top of each other, and you have exactly the, uh, you can represent all the subtle correlations, and well, it's a new picture way to think about it. Anyway, collisions. Uh, the picture allows you all these kind of interesting new states in time. Um, and uh, the basic idea here is <clears throat> gives you a new approach to quantum mechanics where these multiple time states describe experimental situations that you have multiple preparation and multiple measurement stages, which is put states and operators on equal footing. Um, gives a new kind of complementarity, I didn't get a chance to talk about that, but between knowledge and dynamics, and also has implications for the flow of time. And lastly, where is it? Uh, um, I really recommend this book by Ikea Harwam and, and Danny Rorlick. It's uh, really, really fascinating.